One of the weirder things I've seen in this gaming community is how Nintendo fans view first-person shooters in general as a genre. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because of certain games getting hype, but also because of some other things I'd like to address too. So let's talk about what the whole thing is. Now, online, I've seen many Nintendo fans lash out at first-person shooters and the genre in general, calling them dude bro games, and talking about how the Xbox One, and to a lesser extent the PS4, are dude bro first-person shooter consoles with only first-person shooters and nothing else, all with the same exact brown-gray color scheme. Now, up until 2012, I have never seen anybody use that word. I mean, I'm going to be honest here, I never saw anybody in real life or online say that word. Now, when I first heard Nintendo fans obsessively use that word, I always thought that word referred to that person who lives life like someone in an energy drink commercial. You know, where they have all the uh, X Games type people where they're doing extreme stunts and stuff right next to the energy drink and they're like, yo, you could be living life like this if you pop open a can of Red Bull or Mountain Dew. Along with, of course, picking up women like they would in an Axe body spray ad. That's what I always thought a dude bro was. Or that person in class who always had more women than you, was the coolest kid in school and all the kids looked up to him. Yeah, that was who I thought a dude bro was at first. But then I realized that that definition actually applies to anybody who plays the Xbox and not Nintendo, pretty much. And more specifically, Madden or any first-person shooter. Well, almost any first-person shooter because that's what the topic of the video is going to be. Why do people give certain first-person shooters free passes? I mean, every year, whenever they announce a new Call of Duty or Battlefield or whatever, every time I go to the comments, it's more predictable than seeing Polygon or Kotaku write an article about hatred. Even if they make radical gameplay changes, which you don't even need to touch the game to see, people will call it the same game each year. Even if they change the theme, people will either call the ripoff of some other game or something else, or, well, they'll complain about how it's not the same thing like last time, and how it's jumping the shark and is ruined forever. I mean, I saw this with Advanced Warfare. When the trailer for that came out, people were calling it a ripoff of another game that people literally forgot not even a month or two after it came out, because it was a piece of crap. And let's not forget that even if they released a good Call of Duty that year that wasn't, say, Ghosts, that people ended up buying and liking, the reviews are still going to get bombed anyway by certain people. I've actually seen this. Now, I might sound like some troll who's trying to worship Call of Duty, but it's the truth that I've seen on this gaming community. People are literally preconditioned to dislike a video game, not because of its merits of a video game, but because of the label on the package. In fact, I actually knew one person who later removed me from Steam after disagreeing with him about Call of Duty, but he actually said that Call of Duty was about as entertaining as getting teeth drilled at the dentist. Of course, he liked Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and thought they were the best games ever, but I'll get to that later in this video. But for now, keep this in mind. It's funny because he also thought Unreal Tournament, a fast-paced first-person shooter, was an amazing game. But yet, at the same time, this person thought a different fast-paced first-person shooter with a different label on it was bad. But anyways, let's get on to the next thing I'm going to say. So despite these people freaking out at Call of Duty or nearly every other big first-person shooter, these people will hype up a first-person shooter and talk about how it's not generic and breaking the mold if it's by a certain company. And what am I talking about, you may ask? Nintendo fans. And also some Valve fans, since they kind of overlap in parts. But what I'm trying to say here is this. Whenever a company like Valve releases a first-person shooter like Team Fortress 2, which is a pretty mediocre free-to-play game, which has gotten worse and worse every update, people will hail it as an innovative game that breaks the mold, when in reality, it's just a kidified version made free-to-play with hats everywhere, 
of an old Quake mod that costs nothing. And did I mention that even Team Fortress Classic was initially free back before Steam came about? If you owned a copy of Half-Life, it was actually included with patches. But where I really see this is the Wii U owner base and Nintendo's fandom in general. Now, I think we all know how much of a cult Nintendo's fans are. I mean, just take a look at what games sell on the Wii U. Literally no third-party games sell, but when a game has a Nintendo logo slapped all over it, it will sell like crazy. Even though the system's install base does not grow very much, and even though third parties shun the Wii U. I mean, third parties take a look at the Wii U, they don't even want to make games for it. For reasons I've talked about in other videos, but here's the thing. Nintendo's games sell like crazy on their own systems, but yet only among their small fan base. And especially if they fall into the whole bright and colorful mold. I mean, sure, there can be genericness in brown-gray games, which I haven't even seen as much lately, as if you look at games such as Call of Duty Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 2, there's a lot more color in them than, say, Modern Warfare 2 and 3. And even in some brown-gray games, I've seen more colors than just brown and gray. But anyways... If a Nintendo game isn't in the generic, bright and colorful mold, it will not sell as well, especially if it lacks a mascot that they can have on the box, such as Pikachu, or Mario, or Link, and that's why they have the whole Amiibos too. But the thing I noticed with Nintendo's games especially, is how they can get away with releasing literally any genre, and people who normally don't buy games in said genre will suddenly eat it up. I mean, look at how many Pokemon fans have never touched a Shin Megami Tensei game, despite Shin Megami Tensei being Pokemon's influence. And look at how Shin Megami Tensei 4 sold on the 3DS. But, I think the best way to prove my theory that people will automatically buy anything if it's on Nintendo, and published by Nintendo, but especially if it falls into that kitty mold, is this. Three recent Wii U games. Devil's Third, a re-release of a Wii game, Metroid Prime Trilogy, and Splatoon. So let's start off with the first one, Devil's Third. Now, Devil's Third was a game that literally nobody touched during the whole THQ bankruptcy sale a while ago. I mean, literally everything THQ had worth buying, people picked up. From Saints Row, to Metro, to Company of Heroes, and even Homefront got picked up by somebody. Yeah, Homefront, of all games. So it says something when this game got picked up by, of all people, Nintendo, while everybody else was sitting there buying Darksiders, buying Metro, buying Saints Row, buying even Homefront. And from gameplay, Devil's Third, once you look at what it looks like, you can see why Nintendo picked it up. It looks like a generic action game from the PS2 era. Like, remember back in the PS2 day when you had all those edgy games coming out, like all the gang games, and then you had Shadow the Hedgehog and that stuff. Remember when all that stuff was coming out? I mean, the clunky gameplay feels straight out of the PS2 era, along with the uninspired graphics and theme. I mean, it doesn't look like anything impressive. And yet, I've seen people in this small Wii U owner base hype it up like it's going to be the greatest game ever. Like, this is going to be the game that will show those Xbox One and PS4 owners that the Wii U is an amazing system for real gamers. And that those dude bro next gen systems aren't worth owning. And yet me, as a person who's played a lot of games and understands exactly why the Call of Duty series has so much appeal, looks at this game and wonders what is this crap. And yet you've got these people in this small fan base hyping this game up like it's going to be the greatest thing ever. Like it'll be the next Call of Duty, the next Halo, the next big game that will get people playing the Wii U. And yet it will never happen. But what also got revealed the other day was Metroid Prime Trilogy. That game is getting ported to the Wii U. Now, of course, it probably isn't very hard, and I'm guessing it must be another way of padding out the fact that the Wii U literally has no games, but Nintendo is re-releasing that game on the Wii U. 
Now, honestly, Metroid Prime wasn't really that great of a first-person shooter game. It was pretty overhyped, especially by Nintendo as fans. And then you also have to remember the fact that the controls were pretty crappy in that game. I mean, don't you remember the motion controls on the Wii version, and how the GameCube controller had a weird layout for the game's control scheme instead of the usual dual-stick control scheme you thought they would have used like they did in every other game? But here you have a re-release of three first-person shooters from several years ago, which were pretty overrated, being hyped up as the greatest thing ever, even though they're just re-releases, and even though people will call out Call of Duty for rehashing, but yet at the same time, their favorite game series is a re-release of a game several years older. I mean, while Call of Duty might have gained that same reputation through Infinity Ward's Call of Duties, at the same time, you've got this game being a straight-up re-release and people are hyping it up. Now, I think these two games have already proved my point that it's okay when Nintendo does it, that everybody will just happily hand Nintendo a free pass, or certain other companies, when they release the same game over and over again, or when they release a first-person shooter, a genre people usually hate. But at the same time, there's one more game I'm going to mention that proves my theory about these games being given free passes because they're Nintendo, and also the whole, if it has colorful characters, people will eat it up like crazy theory. Splatoon. Now, Splatoon to anybody else would look like a bland, generic game, which has a bunch of colors in it because it can, and with no real artistic direction. I mean, it looks like a clone of Deep Blob, but in third-person shooter form. But yet, at the same time, you've got this whole thing where people are hyping it up like crazy. And, like, they're talking about, like, Splatoon and how it's going to be amazing, and they're even drawing Roll 34 of it like crazy, too. I mean, it honestly looks like one of the blandest, dullest games ever. I mean, just spraying around colors does not make your art style good. But yet, at the same time, the art style of Splatoon panders to those who only have to see a bunch of colors and color-coded characters, and you'll think it's the greatest thing ever. It puzzles me why people think this, but honestly... I see nothing appealing about Splatoon whatsoever. It looks like one of those games you designed for a 10-year-old whose parents won't let them play Call of Duty. I mean, it genuinely looks like that. But at the same time, you've got all these people hyping this game up like it's the greatest game ever made. Like it's going to be the next Call of Duty 4, the next Halo, the next Quake, the next Doom. They're hyping it like it's going to be one of those games. And yet it's not going to, because it's a bland, generic game released on a system nobody owns. But what I still don't understand is this. Why is everybody giving these games a free pass if they're on a Nintendo system and published by Nintendo, or published by a certain other company like, let's just say, Valve? I use Nintendo as an example for most of this, but this also happens with some other companies too, and that's what I wonder. Why do these people who normally talk about how bad first-person shooters are suddenly get hyped if it's coming from a certain company, even if it's just as generic? I mean, I see this all the time. I've seen people talk about how Call of Duty is bland and generic, but yet when Japan makes a generic military game, people hype it up like it's amazing. Or some other company doing it. I mean, I honestly don't get it, and that's honestly what I find weird. Why do these people give free passes to certain companies and only play games in genres if they're from a certain developer? Because you're really limiting your taste in games if you play games from only one publisher or developer. It's that simple. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. Oh, and one more thing that I find funny. I still remember back in 2012 when all these gaming sites were hyping up Spec Ops The Line about how it was going to be this game that was going to be so much better than these big bad dude bro first person shooters. Guess where that game is? Irrelevant. And that's just one more example of proof that people just pick and choose random games because they're from random publishers, developers, and not from certain other ones.